Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're so glad that you could join us. Uh, we have an excellent program here today. Uh, but before we get started, we have just a couple of housekeeping items to address. Um, first, welcome to the NAPNI Professional Learning Communities. My name is Matthew Baruch. I am the State Advocacy Engagement Manager for NAFME. Um, we would like to just a couple things before we turn it over to our presenters. So uh, NAFME supports student online safety and strongly supports equitable access to instructions for all students. This includes universal access to learning devices and services, professional learning opportunities, and time for educators to design online learning environments, tasks, and assessments, opportunities for students to learn how to succeed with online instruction, and an appropriate learning management system. And in that vein, NAFME recommends that children under the age of 13 have adult permission for accessing any online resources, and that students and our families do not provide any identifying information to gain access to the resources free or paid. NAFME has been working with our volunteer leaders to create useful resources for to all music educators during the COVID-19 era. You can find many of those resources under the Four Teachers tab on the NAFME website. And in particular, check out the virtual uh, learning resources and the PLC webinars page for ongoing support and professional development opportunities. Also under the Teacher tab on the NAFME website is a listing of NAFME COVID-19 resources. Of particular interest right now are the research study results coming out of the aerosol research study supported by NAFME and more than 100 other performing arts organizations across the nation. This study is helping us make, learn how to make music safely when we aren't together in person. And you may also be interested in the uh, fall 2020 guidance, which has been newly updated to reflect the aerosol research study results, which we have jointly produced with our colleagues at the National Federation of High School, State High School Associations. NAFME is aware that music education programs will need support this year and next year as school districts figure out how to fund a well-rounded education with limited funds and health and safety needs. This past April, NAFME led a discussion with more than 50 organizations to create the Arts Education is Essential statement. This statement makes clear that arts education, including music education, is avail is vital to the continued well-being of our students and our schools. The statement is available for you to use as an advocacy tool with your student, school administrators, fellow teachers, and parents, and you can encourage your school district to sign onto the statement using the link at the bottom of this slide. Finally, before we bring on our speakers for today's webinar, I'd like to share one additional resource focused on music education and social emotional learning. Provided with support from the CMA Foundation, this brochure shows some of the research behind how music education can support social and emotional learning in our schools and with our students. This is a vital area of concern these days as many of us continue to connect with our students virtually and showcasing how music education can support students in the social emotional development realm. This brochure helps underscore the vital work that you all do each and every day in your classroom. Now, I would love to introduce our speakers for today's webinar. We have with us uh, Ramon Rivera and Jacob Scher. Ramon is the Mount Vernon School District Mariachi Program Director. Currently teaches six mariachi and folkloricle classes with a total enrollment of over 200 K-12 students. And Jacob Scher is the Fine and Performing Arts Direct Department Chair at Mount Vernon High School, a 4A school with an enrollment of 2,000 students. He recently completed his term as president of the San Juan Music Educators Association. Ramon, Jacob, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Take man. it away. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are excited. This is my friend, Jacob Scher. Um, we teach together at Mount Vernon High School in Mount Vernon, Washington. Go Bulldogs. Welcome. Go Bulldogs, yes, go Bulldogs. We, and uh, also um, Omar is one of our fellow teachers who's also watching this. I wanna give a shout out to him. Um, we're gonna um, do a subject that is really, really unique for this month. September 15th, 
to October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. And so what we did, because again, we are teaching virtual this year. We are teaching online. We are full virtual. No, uh, there is a small groups that we could work with, but again, this year it was difficult because of the COVID rate. It went high in our state, so we decided as a district to go online. And so with that, we were able to work on this project to get the kids engaged and excited about Hispanic Heritage Month and reach to a demographic that is sometimes hard for music departments to, um, to reach. So I brought my friend Jacob Scher and, and we worked together to build a Hispanic Heritage Month celebration school-wide, district-wide, and also we went out to the community and did um, different events. So if you don't know what Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm gonna go back and go just a little bit on some slides here. Um, this slide will be included in your um, packet, so just so that you know it's on there forever. This is our Mount Vernon uh, High School Folklorical Group. We could only meet with five students at a time, but there was one of the things that was really, really exciting that we got to actually do little performances and concerts, and we're gonna share that video with you um, in, in this PowerPoint. But I wanna tell you first, Hispanic Heritage Month is, is celebrated September 15th to October 15th. So what's hard is the school year just started, and boom, already Hispanic Heritage Month is um, ready to go, is, is right there for um, you to, to, to celebrate. And so it was signed as Hispanic Heritage Week by President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1968. So it was just a week, a week long um, celebration. And then in 1988, um, the Hispanic Heritage Month was um, signed by law by President Reagan. So it went from a week to a month long celebrations. And so a lot of areas are celebrating it around the United States. So you might want to ask me, what is Hispanic? What is Hispanic? You probably know these different terms like Latino, Latinx, Chicano, um, Mexican, Puerto Rican. So on the next slide, we'll show you what uh, Hispanic is. Now, according to the U U.S. Census, 21% of of the United States is Hispanic. Uh, Hispanic means that you're coming from a Spanish-speaking country. Now, what's difficult is that you're from Cuba or from um, Argentina and from Mexico, but a lot of the areas that we work in, we have uh, a Hispanic, I like to use Hispanic as a term just because um, it's non-gender, like Latino and is for male and Latina is for female and there's Latinx, it's a new words. there's so many different words. I'm just gonna use what the legal term is, which is Hispanic. And so it's usually um, people that are from uh, uh, a Spanish-speaking country. Now, um, this is something that we celebrate in the United States, so it is something that you could include in your curriculum. So we're gonna go to the next slide, and I wanna tell you that we did a campaign for Hispanic Heritage Month because it was something that we saw to reach our demographics at our school. Okay, we come from a school that's about 51% Hispanic, and a lot of them come from uh, migrant backgrounds, uh, field backgrounds, and different backgrounds. And so we're like, how did we reach these kids, and how do we get them engaged in our community? So um, if we look at our demographics, um, you know, 50 it's like 50-50 female and male, um, about, um, you know, 2% Asian, um, almost 1% African American, and Hispanic is, wow, it's at 54%. So 1,185 students that are identified as Hispanic in our school. And so one of the things that we're gonna talk about when I bring Jake uh, on board is we're gonna talk about how we integrate the mariachi, the band, the choir, and the orchestra, and how you could overlap the programs and how you could be part of the programs. And Jake is gonna cover that part because Jake's a band guy and he will love it um, what he talks about. Um, let's go to the one before that, Jake. Um, sure. So uh, Hispanic Heritage Month 
I worked with the CMA Foundation. So it is, I believe, our classrooms are community centers that we need to go out to the community and go, because especially in this time of COVID, right now um, students are not coming to campus. They need to see out in the community what we are doing. So I worked with the CMA Foundation and they put up this quote and it talked about, you know, Hispanic music is a vibrant, diverse um, culture and you could use by listening to current and traditional Hispanic music while also watching Hispanic musicians, dancers and creating performances, rhythms and Hispanic beats and sound is a great way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. I worked with CMA Foundation, I worked with our public library, I worked with our school district, I worked with anybody that we could partner with. And so the next slide is really cool because it has something we did that's really simple. We got two of our students, that's Maria and, and Janice, and they got uh, Hispanic books from the library and put it in English and Spanish. So this was in the front of the Mount Vernon High School Library. I mean, not the high school library and the city library. So again, these partnerships could be really simple that you could really do. I also, I'm working right now with the library where the students are reading the books. I, I read a book today and it's gonna be published on their Facebook page. And then Janice is gonna read a book in Spanish and um, Maria is gonna read a book in Spanish. All right, so I wanna just show you what we did. So we have a video series. Uh, well, let's talk about the virtual concerts and sets up. Um, so included in, this, included in this PowerPoint are videos, tons and tons of videos that you could use. Also, um, we had a class called advisory. Advisory is where we met with the students and talked about different subjects. It wasn't like a, a specific class, but the school-wide watched these videos and then they had a discussion about Hispanic Heritage Month. So I, we included that at the end of our presentation and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But um, we did, we were able to do a virtual concert and a virtual concert, we were able to film, we only allow us to have five kids at a time. And then um, we did one with our dance group. Um, it'll be on um, the, this presentation. You could use it, feel free to use it. And then we had a mariachi band do about an hour concert. So uh, it's right around 700, 482 people attended it live on Facebook. And then on the webs, on the YouTube channel, it's about at 700 views. So we're really excited that even in this virtual world, we were able to reach uh, people on there. So that we're gonna do some fun stuff about the video. Um, Jake, I'm gonna share my videos now. Sure. Okay, um, one of the cool things is that we have the Mount Vernon High School television station and uh, the television advisor is a good friend of, I, a friend of ours. And so he, he helped us make these videos because we had to reach kids through video, just like how we're doing Zoom. And so we interviewed different things. And I wanna show you this, um, this video, just a piece of it of us so Jay, Jake is um, a band teacher, orchestra teacher, and we have Omar, he's also a band teacher. And so one of the, the things that we did is go out to the community and we recorded a video of visiting the local Mexican food market. Now, Mr. Cher has never been there before, and maybe it was because he was afraid of the language. Maybe he's going to talk more about that. But we made a video of us visiting. And so it was kind of cool. I'm going to just show you a piece of it. Um, delicious stuff. Here you go, so Mr. these things, these bad boys, that is just like sweets on the inside covered in spice. So you'll notice a lot of Mexican candy is just basically <laughs> sweet, fruity type flavors with some chili powder or some kind of spice on the outside contrast the flavors so what we did is we talked about the different candies the different foods we we went and this video went to the middle schools and the high schools and so this hispanic business their sales went up as a staff we we go there now a lot of staff members have said hey i've never been to this store so again again it's just educating our community about the resources that they have and how we could support a Hispanic business. Um, the other one is I, I could, 
is that we did the virtual concert and you can see that on YouTube and I send you the link. The other one is that we, we interviewed our superintendent and our superintendent talked about Hispanic Heritage Month and why it's important. So this is something really simple that you could do. Kids in the future and beyond. You know what? We are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th to October 15th, for the first time ever in this district. As a Hispanic American, how do you feel our district celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month? I think it's incredible and important to really value and honor the kids that are in our community. When we have over half of our student population that are Hispanic, what a wonderful thing to do to recognize them this way. So that's our superintendent, Dr. Vivanco. So we included our superintendent, we included our ASB president, we included uh, teachers and music teachers and everyone, anyone possible to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. What was really cool was another aspect of it was our LB, our Pride Club at school. Our Pride Club said, you know, we want to participate in Hispanic Heritage Month. And they did a whole video about L LGBTQ um, community uh, about their aspect, their figures of Hispanic Heritage Month. So you could look that up too. I, I included the link on there also. Also, what's coming up is called Day of the Dead or Dia Los Muertos. I have a whole, a video and a set of questions to go with it. So you're allowed to do you are allowed to use these free resources. Again, I want you to use these videos. I want you to use these questions because I want you to be able to connect with your students with these videos. So it's it's all here. Um, another way we did a lot of our Hispanic outreach was again on on Instagram and getting students excited. You could take a look at our Instagram and see. Um, we, we even made the front page of the school of uh, the newspaper because we were um, doing all this stuff for Hispanic Heritage Month. Okay, before I turn it over to Jake, I really I'm going to stop share screening. If you have any questions during our presentation, please feel free to write the chat. Jake and I are controlling the chat. So if you have any questions, you're like, I can't wait to the end of the presentation, go for it. I mean, again, we want this to be participatory and I want you guys what we could do to reach out to our, his, our Hispanic community. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go to our next part, which is really, really cool. So I'm the mariachi teacher. I teach mariachi and folklorico. But I, you know, I'm a music teacher, but the thing is really great is that we get to work with our choir, our band, our mariachi, and our orchestra. So uh, Jake is going to talk about this, but I want to tell you that this is something that has impacted our department so much because it brought the programs together. Because I've taught at a school where um, the band program, they do their own thing. The orchestra program, they do their own thing. The choir program does their own thing. The mariachi does their own thing. And I think we're stronger when we work together. And we could, we bring inclusion to close together. We bring people together. And there's nothing more powerful than bringing people together than music, art, and food. But since we're all music teachers, you know, imagine the world without music. Imagine the world without a diverse music and including all types of music. So I'm gonna stop talking because I could talk forever. So I'm gonna have um, my friend, Jacob Scheer, who's gonna talk about how, he, first, Jake, you need to tell him what, how it was to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and doing all that and then talk about our wonderful music program because I think it could be modeled for other departments around the country. Well, uh, good uh, afternoon, morning, everyone, where, every time you're watching this. Um, and I just can't say how um, enough about how fun it's been doing these projects, being involved in these videos, and what an incredible learning experience it was for me. Uh, I've driven by that shop thousands of times. It's near my house. And I just never, uh, I, I felt like I worked with uh, students from different cultures, but I didn't make that next step of going out into the community and seeing that other culture. And to getting my, you know, it's one thing to look in a textbook and read, okay, here's what this month is. And then going out and experiencing that with my colleagues and my fellow teachers has really opened my eyes to the next steps that I can take in my learning and uh, growing in our community. Um, and like we were talking about earlier, um, this is what our community is. It's a mixed uh, 
uh, cultures of primarily Hispanic and white students, um, and um, how can we celebrate both of those um, uh, and make everyone feel welcome here is a big goal of our department. Uh, so uh, kind of the twist that I'm going to talk a little bit about is, um, and I also want to reiterate that there's uh, more resources and videos. Uh, we have the store visit. Um, we also have interviews with uh, farm workers. Uh, we talked about dance, leadership, um, and the Day of the Dead. Um, so these are all on the slides and resources. So um, this kind of philosophy of collaboration really didn't happen in a year. I, this is my 11th year here at Mount Vernon. Uh, I was fortunate enough to start the mariachi program uh, years ago. And I kind of want to take a, maybe a different twist on celebrating the Hispanic Heritage Month as kind of it's now become part of the culture of our school is celebrating these different events. And these are um, activities and things you can do hopefully as a cookie cutter for any kind of culture that's in your district. Um, this uh, picture when we're jumping here um, is, um, I want to say like six years ago, we took our beginning, this, is, this was the whole mariachi program when we started, uh, and we went to the Northwest Mariachi Festival that uh, Ramon was uh, in charge of. Um, and uh, I can honestly say this has been one of the greatest experiences of my career so far, is um, uh, diving into this different world of mariachi and seeing how it's improved our whole program. Um, so um, when I started here in 2009, um, my job was the band director. So I was in charge of two bands, uh, and I taught a music appreciation class and beginning instrument, and uh, it was really fun putting this together and seeing how the program has changed over the 11 years. Um, and this is just the path that I took. Um, obviously, uh, I wasn't able to you know, foresee what was going to happen 11 years later, um, but it was this kind of this mindset of always growing the program. Um, and so what I've attached here is how uh, the program has changed over those 11 years to get to kind of where we are today, um, where we have a mariachi program that integrates with our orchestra and band. Um, so uh, later we were, and I highlighted all the new classes that we were added. So <clears throat> it really, it's only been within the last couple of years that my schedule has stayed the same. It's always been adding and changing and trying to improve what uh, can make our program better for all of our students and reach our community better. So a couple of years later, I took over the orchestra program, 2011. Uh, and then in 2012, 13, we started the Mariachi program. And it was six students after school. We had an amazing principal at the time. Uh, who uh, found some funds for us to buy a couple instruments, and I was learning guitarone, vuelas, and trying to figure it out. And that happened for about two years, and then we were able to integrate um, the program uh, into the school day because our district hired another teacher. Um, the programs were growing, and we were able to say, okay, I need some help with the bands and orchestras and jazz, and uh, I kept teaching the mariachi around it, um, uh, for two years, 2014 to 2016. Um, and then as programs were growing even more, you can, hopefully you can see we're adding another jazz band, we're adding other music classes. Uh, then we were able to add a chamber orchestra. Um, and now, uh, last year we started a, another uh, mariachi program. Uh, and a lot of this growth is also due to our other director, Omar Ardonias, um, who's also viewing this today. Um, he has worked incredibly hard to expand the program. Uh, and then, this is what we have now. So this is uh, what the schedule uh, was going to be. Uh, and when we come back um, from the COVID stuff, this is what we're working toward. Um, and keeping that philosophy of integration in mind, um, we have our classes set up that we can work together during the school day. So um, our string players for the string orchestra, uh, are we use mariachi as our warm up. Um, and then um, they get to come over to the mariachi Azteca class and play mariachi music with them. Um, and then our chamber orchestra is the same thing. Our small ensembles class, our mariachi singers get to get coached by our wonderful choir director, Jesus Gomez, um, Omar Ardonia. So we're all uh, on board with um, growing and seeing how students can um, integrate all of their program together. So um, this, obviously this celebrating Hispanic heritage um, ha was a big part of um, this uh, video project in the series. Um, but that doesn't start, stop there. It's kind of a year-long collaboration on different things we can do to um, show the growth in our department and the culture of our school. And it actually, it starts before the year even begins. So one of the things we do is we take a, an overnight retreat to a local campground, um, a facility that can host music groups, and we take our top groups. So that's a wind ensemble, concert choir, chamber orchestra, and MV Mariachi. And so we spend a couple of days um, uh, working on leadership, working on music and combined events that we're going to do after the year. 
I talked earlier about how our schedule allows for class crossover uh, integrating during the school day. We do a holiday event concert where um, it's just the top ensemble, so those same groups that we took to that retreat. Uh, the community gets to see a jazz band, then they get to see a mariachi group, then they hear a choir, then they hear a percussion ensemble, then they see a combined event um, with all the groups together. Uh, also on here, we've had a lot of fun doing jazz and mariachi concerts together. And one of the things, I had never been to a mariachi concert before. Um, I went to this Northwest Festival, and I was blown away by how engaged the audience is. In. It was totally different than any kind of uh, orchestral or, con or concert band concert I've been into. The audience was so engaged, and it really reminded me of a jazz concert. It was like, wow, this is a participatory, um, feeding off of each other kind of event. And they work so well together. The crowds um, engage in both. And it's so fun for those parents to see jazz who maybe haven't been experienced that before, um, or those parents to see mariachi who haven't seen mariachi before. So they're celebrating both students. Joint trips together. Um, this, we're working on this really fun project right now. We did a Let It Be um, arrangement of mariachi, choir, orchestra, and band. And right now we are working on uh, our fight song. And so in a way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we took our school fight song. Uh, I rearranged it. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rivera wrote the words out, uh, Mr. Gomez did the uh, choral component to it and uh, put it all into an audio file. Uh, and so I'm going to play just a little bit of that for you right now. I make sure I need to share the audio. So our, we have the On Wisconsin, On Mount Vernon is our fight song. And we took it kind of to a different twist and hopefully this is um, allowing Hispanic students to feel part of our culture. Like they own, have some ownership in our school. Vamos Montverno, vamos Montverno, si ya se final, verde y blanco nunca falta orgullo comunal. Vamos Montverno, vamos Montverno, luchas a ganar. So hopefully that audio came across okay. Um, I got goosebumps listening to it, hearing uh, what our school is about now um, has been really fun. Uh, we call it The Bomb. This is our band orchestra mariachi boosters. Um, and uh, we have parent groups that meet um, and a liaison for each component. And so they get to advocate for kind of a well-rounded music program. And then it can be as little things as like celebrating our student leadership. So we're working on getting our student leaderships from all the different activities, choir, orchestra, band, mariachi, to have kind of a similar philosophy about what they're doing. Uh, one of the things we're working on is getting posters of all of our drum majors and MV mariachi captains and choir section leaders along the wall in our music building. So when someone walks down, they can see that leadership throughout the whole program. So these are just some pictures. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, it doesn't have to just be Hispanic um, collaboration. Um, so the m video in the center is our Let It Be video. Uh, on the right is our um, composition for the On Mount Vernon that we're doing. On the l upper left-hand corner, at the end of the year, we do a rock orchestra concert where we put together different pieces from classic rock pieces, and that integrates orchestra and choir and band uh, as well. And then we have a joint trip that we took to Portland on the left. And uh, we do a concert in the park. Uh, this is an uh, amphitheater local here in Mount Vernon, um, and this is another joint event that we do uh, with uh, bands and mariachi and things like that to bring people into the community. And like what Ramon was saying earlier, it's so important that we are a community hub. We need to find ways of getting outside of the school walls and reaching beyond that, and I hope these are uh, valuable ways of doing this. Um, Ramon, do you want to jump in and talk a little bit about some of the quotes that we have coming up? Okay, so again, this is Lucas, and maybe you could tell us more about Lucas, Jake, because you, you work with them, and I could do the teacher quotes. But because um, Lucas was in um, band and mariachi at the same time, he played um, the tuba and he played guitarron. So what was great was that we got some quotes from students, some feedback of how did it feel to have 
to be in both ensembles because to be a full a full member it wasn't like you're you know we brought them for this one song they would travel and they would perform and they would wear the uniform and so like um lucas wrote uh, in high school i was an avid member of the mariachi program he showed, he found a different understanding the music he said it reminded him of jazz there's a more uh, free way of playing it so i i really like that lucas was able to get his guitaron skill i mean his tuba skills which he already knew how to read treble clef and now he could read treble clef and guitaron and he was just actually as good as both of them right he was a really strong player so um and what's great is that um we're able to integrate our programs together and they could play multiple instruments because of the schedule why don't you tell them about the eight um period schedule that you're able to date avid music mariachi um and a lot maybe jake could tell you a little bit about that yeah so uh, i imagine some districts are also on this it's the block schedule it's four periods one day and four periods the next of course there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages to both um, but we found a lot of opportunity for collaboration and one of the biggest things is allowing students to have more electives freshmen get two sophomores get three juniors and seniors can get up to seven um, or six different electives um, so lucas uh, here uh, was involved he's now a he just graduated he's a music major at a local university uh, he was involved in uh, MV Mariachi, Percussion Ensemble, Wind Ensemble, Jazz One, um, and I think he also did a couple after-school bands as well, um, some local community groups. So really involved in the band program. Not typical student that you would see leaning right into Mariachi, um, but um, he just could not get enough of music, and this was another outreach for him and an outlet for him to be a part of. And his group uh, were selected to go to state from our state music competition that we have here. Unfortunately, that wasn't able to happen due to the COVID stuff. Um, but uh, I don't think that he's going to let that part of his music part, uh, tradition go just because of that. He is still playing and an active member. And this is a, another example of a student who found another group, another family to be accepted in. Just like uh, when I went to that store, I wasn't sure uh, what that experience was going to be like, but uh, I now go back every week with the staff for tacos. So, so I'm going to, Jake, I'm going to show this one part of the video. Uh, yeah. So, and then we'll go to the teacher quotes. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel right in the chat. If you have any comments, I put some um, video links and our, our school website, our, our Mount Vernon High School website, which includes everybody. You know, it's not just the band and so we we believe that w the more that we work together that the band is as equal as important as the mariachi the choir so it's great to have this collaboration I, we have four music teachers um at the high school and we, it's just a fun thing to see all of us work together and i'm going to share you what you know um what the students feel this is uh, maria I think we, I want to make sure I put the audio. Yeah, Maria is our MV Mariachi president, and she really tells you why uh, Mariachi is important and celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month is important. Just a really short click, clip. Hey, can you, que viva Mariachi. We are so happy to have the Mariachi program. We're doubling the size of the Mariachi program. This is Maria. She's president of the MV Mariachi. Tell us how you feel of being in this mariachi program. Honestly, I feel really happy. Like, I didn't know it was going to be such a great experience. I started since freshman year. And let me tell you, it was the best experience ever here in high school. What I'm so excited is that we're going to do a lot of amazing things. We have mariachi, and we also have our folklorico class. It is something that you could be a part of. And you don't need to speak Spanish, right, to be in mariachi? You don't. You can speak in any language as long as you are committed to being in mariachi. And we have people that don't speak Spanish, right, that are in our mariachi program. Yeah, we do have some people. So in our recruitment video, um, we just put it, she, she said it right on the spot. She goes, do you need to speak Spanish to be in mariachi? She says, no. And we have a lot of people. So this video went to the whole school. 
Um, we have a question from um, Jacob. Um, do you have any advice for an educator who has never played mariachi but wants to start a pro mariachi program? Great question. So um, I, I, I could probably talk a little bit about that since. Yeah, go for that, Jake. So Jacob, and my name is Jacob, that's like me. Uh, I am a clarinet player and a cellist, classical trained, uh, went through U Symphony, had no experience in mariachi at all. And uh, I was surprised at how quickly I was able to learn um, and how fast I learned from my mistakes. Because I made a lot. <laughs> Starting it out, uh, it was really nice. I, looking back on it, doing it as like an after school program and um, really um, taking it slow was helpful. Not putting myself out there too fast to the communi community, I thought was really important. Because as soon as you start it, you're going to get, hey, can you come play for this? Can you come play for that? And just kind of slowing down a little bit and, and really understanding where the students are coming at. And I would say I learned uh, most of what I know uh, at the time from the students. That kind of blew me away where I didn't have that many band kids that would say, oh, my dad listens to the host for suite all the time. And we listen to that in the car together. But in mariachi, I had students saying, oh, my grandmother sings this song all the time or my dad knows this piece and they would be able to give me a lot of information so really using the students as a resource I don't speak any Spanish and I I'm actually really pretty bad um, so helping them with the vocals was really tough but I was able to find a lot of resources Ramon um, when I was starting the Mayash program here was a huge resource for me uh, and getting out and going to events and seeing and seeing that experience because I, I so much of Mayashi for me was learning what the experience of that community was like. Um, and I w would just, for any educator out there, I would, um, I, uh, don't be afraid of it. Because if you feel like, well, I'm just, you know, for me, I'm just this white guy trying to start a mariachi program. Um, what kind of right do I have to do that? But I think our school needed it, and our school and our community wanted that, and that was the way that I could connect with students. And I grew a lot from it, our community grew, and you can see our, our program grew a lot from it. When I started here, there was two music teachers, and now we have four full-time teachers here, and our band program is bigger, our orchestra program is bigger. It's just helped everything. So I hope that was able to help a little bit of your, your question. Um, I think Ramon could probably talk a little bit more about the mechanics than like the, the, maybe the, the instruments that you might need to buy and things like that. He probably would be a better resource for that. Um, I included my email, so again, if you have any questions about starting a mariachi program, I helped a lot of districts, even I helped Jake, uh, Jake came to watch me about, I don't know, 10 years ago, and um, what was great is that we started programs, um, so most of you know how to read a score, and what's great is that Hal Leonard and some of the big publishers now have full mariachi scores. So the kids, it was a tradition that was passed down by family, so like, you know, you were part of the Rivera family, so you would learn it. But now since it's a public school, they know how to read music. Every, they know how to uh, read notes and tablets and all those wonderful things. But the next part is, is getting the instruments and the instrumentation. So like right here, I have a guitarron. So that's played in bass clef. And there's tons of video of how to play the guitarron, the notes, how to play it. Actually, it, uh, most of the students, like the Lucas, played the tuba and played guitarron. So the only instrument you really need to know is the guitar is the same as, as a classical guitar, G, D7, C. They mostly play in first position. Um, the vihuela is another instrument that you would have to learn. But the violins, you already, if you're a music teacher, you, you could do violins. You could do trumpets, or you could do exactly what, what we're doing here in Mount Vernon. The orchestra learns the string parts, and I mostly work with the, the guitars and trumpets. And so um, there's a tons of resources. Um, I, I will include that in the chat um, that you could get. Uh, again, the major publishers are, are now selling. You can go to Peppers and get a whole bunch of um, uh, mariachi music. And any other resources that you would like, you could come in. I, I'll believe me, I'll share what I can and um, how to help you get it started because it's, it's a big interest for our Latino community, right? Our Hispanic community, they love this music. They have that connection to school. And the thing is, I really believe if you 
get a kid with a positive outlet, such as music, such as cheerleading, such as mariachi, such as soccer, you know they will do better in school. Every, every study says that. So Jacob, I, I could, uh, you just let me know how I could help you get things started and send you some, uh, send you some music, take a look at it. And, you know, I'll be happy to help you. Cause I mean, I, I want your, your school to have a mariachi program. It's made a big difference here in Mount Vernon by having the program. Um, if you could look at Jake's numbers, it went from, uh, you know, we had a handful of students. Now we have a hundred plus that are here just at the high school and now it's at the middle schools and now we have dance and, so it's, again, it's a way of expanding your music program and a way of include and being an inclusive music program. Because the big thing right now is being inclusive, having diversity, bringing in students that normally wouldn't be. And you know, cause mariachi is their thing. If they like mariachi, great. If band is their thing, great. Um, any questions ab about that, um, Jake, uh, Jacob, or is that good? You can send me some emails. One of, one of the things that I um, did when I was first starting the Mariachi program, to get a little bit more specific, is um, I used the students who were already in band and orchestra, like Ramon was saying, as a resource. And we learned one song that first, whatever, a couple of weeks we did. And then we would go around to all the different Spanish classes and we'd play it, you know, like showing them, hey, here's what Mariachi is and this, and this is. So I was surprised at how quickly we, the, the, we were able to have something that we could share with our local community. I think it felt a lot different than maybe a jazz band or a concert band class where you have to spend a lot of time and a lot of people to get a product out that you can share and start promoting your group. Um, well, Jake, Jacob, since you're in college, it just makes you more marketable when you go for a job. I get phone calls all the time about do you know a t person that could teach band or mariachi, choir or mariachi, orchestra or mariachi? If you could do both, you uh, could find a job like that. I mean, there's districts that call me all the time. They're like, they're looking for orchestra. They're looking for that mix. So if you have both, great, great. And I have a lot of teachers that have done both, such as Jake, such as Omar, that have done band and mariachi. And, you know, again, the, mo the more marketable you are, the more diverse you are in your teaching, it's great to, to add that to your teaching, Jake. So that's, that's great. Um, so the next part we're going to talk about is the effects of doing Hispanic Heritage Month at your school. Hispanic Heritage Month was so important, but we did a lot of collaboration. So like yesterday, I worked with the, um, the choir. So we learned to do a song called Las Mañanitas. And Las Mañanitas is the birthday song. And so this is Mr. Cole. He is our choir teacher at Mount Baker Middle School. And so I, I, we, what I did was I had the mariachi do the guitar and the guitarron and the trumpet part. And then we zoomed in together and we did, um, we sang, they sang Las Mañanitas and we played the guitar part. And it was really cool to do it at the And You know, what he says is that um, our schools immediately, our students immediately explained how many of their families have sung this song before. To help our students, um, we must validate, embrace, support, and share the compassion with many, uh, many and all cultures. So he was just excited to have you know, to, to get that connection, the immediate connection by just playing this song, because music has a lot of power. And the minute they play that song, they're like, wow, Mr. Cole, you know this song? Wow, you're gonna work with Mr. Rivera? You're gonna work with the mariachi? It was total engagement. That's what I really liked, it's like instant engagement. He wrote me that day, he, on an email, he said, wow, Ramon, you know, the students were pumped. They were excited to work with you. They liked the videos, so, Again, it's it's something that I was really excited about doing, um, working together. Um, this is our next uh, quote from again. Um, oh, I like his picture. Anyway, uh, Jake, why don't you why don't you talk about Omar? Sure. Um, so Omar is another uh, the other band director here at the high school, um, and uh, we're so lucky to have him. Uh, and he came on board as our program was growing. 
Uh, and he speaks Spanish fortunately, so he was able to kind of help more with the mariachi and take it to that next level beyond what I was able to do. Um, and um, I just kind of love what he wrote about his perspective here. Despite growing up in a Hispanic house as an immigrant, I never studied traditional Latin American or Mexican music. Uh, in the college, uh, the fear among educators I knew was th uh, that adding or expanding these programs would cut into already struggling music classes. The longer I taught mariachi alongside the concert bands and jazz, the more I realized that it actually grew our programs more than ever. Um, and I I'm so glad he's felt this way too. Um, and uh, uh, it's been a you know, privilege to work with him. And he's still along, he's still here, um, which is a testament to our school and what we've been able to do. Oh, Omar just waved. I don't know if you guys can see him too. He's tuning in and watching. Um, and you saw him on the outreach video we did as well. Um, so it's really been a full department effort to kind of make this uh, uh, go the next step. I don't know if you want to say hi, Mr. Ardonius. Yeah, just saying hi. So related to that same thing, you know, as um, especially like uh, Jacob Martin mentioned in chat, is that if you're in college, you know, you're looking ahead at some of this stuff. Uh, I was always taught by a lot of educators that programs like this, guitar classes, uh, all these um, slightly more niche groups w could potentially cut into already struggling music programs. And that's the reality is, is that our programs, as you saw from the earlier chart, they, they've only grown since adding it by a lot. So it's, all, it's always beneficial. And we're not trying to toot our own horn here. I think we, we have a pretty good product that we're putting out for our community. And you can do this for um, Irish music. Um, you could do this for yeah. Scottish music. You could do this for uh, the community that you're in. And hopefully that these uh, celebrating the um, way we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with the different videos, that could be a cookie cutter that you could use for other things that are relevant in your community. Yeah, and the example that Jake shared with uh, like Irish music, I, I have a friend who teaches orchestra and he doesn't have a orchestra program for Celtic music in the schools, but he has a club with hundreds of students um, throughout his district and he does Celtic music in Boston. And that's kind of their big thing because they have a lot of people that are still very closely tied to Irish culture. So, you know, it's not just mariachi that this sort of um, inclusivity and diversity of music and ensembles can really be applied to. So um, this is, thank you, Omar. Um, this is Miss Wolf. Uh, she is a choir teacher at La Venture Middle School. And I got to work with both middle school teachers on, on learning Las Mañanitas. But this is um, some quotes from the kids, which is really cool. After doing the Hispanic Heritage Celebration, she took a survey to ask them how did they feel about it? How did the students do it? By just recognizing, by having these videos, by talking, by having these discussions. You, I think, again, it's just to have the discussion in your classroom, talking, recognizing the culture, talking about it. And maybe you might have your own ideas. You might want to do, hey, guys, we're going to have uh, a food celebration. What kind of foods you celebrate at home? And you'll see the questions that are included. But I really like the students' response is that they wrote, um, the music makes me feel important because it represents the day I was born. You know, that was probably from the song Las Mañanitas. The music makes me feel like I'm home and safe. Awesome. Makes me feel like I'm in grandma's house again. I mean, just again, this is student feedback. I love it. I, it reminds me of my culture. I am Hispanic and I remember listening to Mexican music as a kid with my grandma. So you have that it's generational connection where you have, you know, uh, what I like about a lot of mariachi music or Hispanic music, especially mariachi music, is that grandma listens to it, um, mom and dad listen to it, and the kids listen to it. So when we have a concert or we have a get together or we have a Day of the Dead celebration, it includes everybody. And so um, Rachel, uh, who's uh, Miss Wolf, was the choir teacher, was just so excited to collaborate with us on this project and we're actually going to continue the collaboration we're not just stopping with hispanic heritage month we're already working on feliz navidad for um um for winter and then for the spring we're going to do um another song so again the more that we integrate together the more successful our program is and the more they get to know me as a teacher i don't have to do a lot of hardcore recruiting because they already know me they already know mr chair they already know mr o so um, yeah, Jake, you'll take the next one with Mr. Gomez. 
Yeah, so uh, Mr. Gomez is our choir director here, and we have done so many collaborations together that not only with the um, mariachi, um, we've done some with just orchestra and band, some with band and choir, some with choir and orchestra, choir and mariachi. So it's not always just a everyone event kind of a thing, but there is this sense of collaboration. And I love how he talks about coming from a program in Oregon uh, that was really competitive. I think he had hundreds of kids in choir when he was singing in there. And there was multiple directors, and they would win state several times. Um, but I firmly believe that when one of us succeed, we are all made better for it. And, and that I have seen, uh, maybe you've seen that in other programs around your area, where if one program is doing better, that becomes a detriment to the others. And I would just say I hope that they can learn from each other and grow. I want our rivals in here in Mount Vernon, the Burlington uh, team across the river, to have a great band program. Because if they have a great band program, that's going to push us to be better. And uh, I want our mariachi program to be as strong as it can be. And I want our choir program to be as strong as it can be. And we, we've really embraced this idea of um, working together in the culture that that um, it ha has created here. So our next slide is Miss Brenham. Brenham, and yeah. Brenham. I always pronounce her name wrong. Her name's Andrea. She's, <laughs> she's a fantastic music educator, has taken her groups all over the place. But what I really like is what she says. Um, Hispanic Heritage Month materials made by the music department help me as a white educator see inside of a community with in our community that I otherwise would not expose to. Students in my class were able to feel, see, and celebrate by sharing the unique and colorful parts of the culture with me and their classmates. So again, she was able to reach out, reach out to, um, reach out to her students, connections. I just wanted to, to hear the teacher's perspective, the student's perspective, so it's not just us talking about how great this is, it affected teaching, it affected learning. So that's what was so great. So we only have a few more minutes. Um, Jake is gonna put our, 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 our contacts on the board and I'm gonna open up for any questions. Um, again, this video is um, found online. Uh, anything that we could do to help you with celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month or mariachi. Also, you know, we have, uh, please, uh, click here for to complete the quiz for professional development credit. You do need clock hours. I, I sign up for every single clock hour there is. But um, now it's, it's time for questions. And Jake is going to put our contacts on the board. If you need have any questions, please feel free to email either one of us. You know, if you want you want to talk about band and how you integrate it, or you want to talk about mariachi, either one. And I hope you come away with this with um, some tangible things that you can do, where it's like making the videos, going out to a local community store, maybe some events that you can do together to celebrate those that gets part of the community, and then maybe also a kind of overarching um, what you can do this in the lo in the longer vision of the of the process. Miss um, Bramman, who started the Mariachi program at Mount Baker, she's taken her bands to our Washington Music Educators Conference. She's formed at the Northwest Nathalie Conference with her band, so she is an all-in band director. But also, I think has enjoyed working with the Mariachi as well. Um, so also, I did include in the next couple of slides is a documentary that you could just show. You could just show this documentary. It's really good. There's one, uh, Mariachi Wenachi has a great documentary about kids learning music and how it affects them. Um, there's also Canto Mi, Mi Familia is another great video. I put the links and also the video questions are there too. So these are the discussion questions that went out to the whole entire school. I, I got to write them, so they were awesome. Well, thank you both very much, Ramon and Jacob, for an excellent webinar. Uh, I certainly learned a lot about Hispanic heritage and mariachi. Um, for everybody who attended, the quiz link and the slide deck with their links and the videos will be posted on the website, the NAFME website. Um, and the quiz link has also been dropped in the chat here. Or thank you again to Ramon and Jacob for a lovely webinar. Um, everybody, enjoy your weekend. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.